Hello and welcome to another episode. In this one, I'm going to explain the basics of the tool called Talks and how you might use it to test a Python package. So let's jump into that one. All right, so I've cloned, well, <laughs> I got to CD into it, uh, but I've cloned one of my repositories called PyUpgrade. PyUpgrade is a tool that does some code formatting stuff, but that's not important for this one. Um, it already is configured with talks, but I'm going to show you how to configure talks from scratch and, uh, you know, implement the testing of this, this library here. And so we're going to start by deleting the talks.ini file because we're going we're gonna to pretend like it didn't exist. And we're going to start by creating a talks.ini file. So the basics, uh, or at least what I think about when I think about talks is that it's a replacement for make that knows things about Python. Now this isn't quite true because it's not exactly a build system. It's more of a command runner than anything else. Whereas like, you know, normally with make you have inputs and outputs and it does does fun stuff like that. But talks is kind of a nice way to encode the way that you test a project. Um, I think the readme calls it the talks automation project. And like, I think that automation is kind of the, the interesting parts of talks. And uh, I'm actually one of the maintainers. So I, I spent some time working on it, but um, that's not important here, I guess. So the prerequisites for what I'm going to show today, I'm going to be testing a Python library. The things are a little bit different if you're working in a, uh, in an application, but, uh, we'll just talk about a library for today. So it, to be a library, you need to have like, you know, setup.py or setup.cfg or whatever, or pyproject.tuml, although talks has special stuff for pyproject.tuml, which I won't go into today because I don't have pyproject.tuml. Uh, but yeah, let's start with talks.ini. So the basic top level is uh, you'll have a talks config section. This is an INI configured file. Well, well of course it is because it has an INI extension. Um, and your most basic configuration starts with the talks section and the test env section. This is where you're going to define your particular commands for the things you're going to run. And the talks section defines like what is globally available. Um, the most important key that I, or I consider the most important key, the env list um, key of talks. This gives some hints to the user as to which environments they can possibly run. And it also shows up in like talks dash dash list and some other stuff. Uh, but here we're just gonna list some environments that our tests want to run in. Um, and these are mostly named by the Python version that they're targeting. So let's, let's say that this library was targeting Python 3.6 through Python 3.9. And maybe it's also targeting PyPy3. So we'll also add all of those there. Um, and maybe it's targeting Python 3.10, but that doesn't exist yet on this computer. So let's, we'll, we'll, we'll save that one for later. <laughs> this will be important. Um, but yeah, you define all of your environments like that, and then you define your test dev. In your test dev, your goal is to list the commands that you want to run to test your library, as well as the dependencies to, that need to be installed. And Talks will manage setting up your virtual environment for you, installing all those dependencies, and like, you know, doing all that for you. That's kind of the magic of it. Is is the virtual env setup? That's kind of the selling point there. And so in in my packages, the way I set these things up is I have a requirements dev file. Um, although I could just inline these three requirements directly in talks.ini and save myself a file. And actually talks works better if you list the actual dependencies here, because it, it doesn't know this is a file, so it doesn't know to look at that. Uh, but I will do dash r requirements dev.txt. Now the, <laughs> the spacing here is actually important because talks will treat these as separate dependencies otherwise and try and do some fancy installing. Uh, this is valid for pips, so you can leave out the space here. That's how you install those dependencies. And then the other part of it is the commands mapping. And this will list the commands that you want to run to test your library. Uh, in my case, I'm using PyTest and I'm also using coverage, but we'll we'll skip the coverage part for this. So we'll just we'll just do the most basic example where we just run the tests. And you can do py, pytest tests. So that's the most basic thing. Uh, one useful substitution though is to do pause args tests. This way you can use talks to run your tests, but you can alternatively, you know, specify an individual test or some parameter to, to check that exactly. And that's kind of the basics of talks. And so now if you want to run all of the talks environments, you would just type talks and it will, you know, 
set up your package. I'll actually pause this part way through so that we can scroll through this, but it's gonna it's gonna go real quickly after it starts going. Um, and you can see like it's running the tests. Uh, but the first thing it did is it took the first env list in this list here. So it uh, created a Python 3.6 environment. It installed our dependencies into them. It showed us what it installed, which is kind of useful. And then it ran the stuff in the command. So you can see it ran PyTest tests. You know, the tests completed and they pass for Python 3.6. And then it goes on to the next one. So it does Python 3.7 and then 3.8 and then 3.9 and then PyPy3, which will be a little bit slower. Uh, partially because uh, PyPy doesn't do so well on cold starts with test suites because the, the JIT can't really take over at that point. But, you know, it's still still reasonably fast. Um, and then it'll fail at the end with interpreter not found Python 3.10. And this, this is kind of the first pro tip of using talks. Uh, there is this skip missing interpreters. I believe it's both a setting and an option. Uh, skip. Yeah, skip missing interpreters. Um, I don't know why it thinks it takes a value. Pretty sure it's just this. Yeah. Um, and so you can see like, instead of failing on 310 here, it will just skip it because I don't have it installed on my machine. Normally, if you're like developing on some open source library that uses talks, like this skip missing interpreters is a, is a decent idea for, uh, for when you run that because you know, you probably don't have all of these interpreters installed locally like I do. <clears throat> But you'll see again, it'll run all the tests here. Notice it was a lot faster this time, and that's because it reused all of those virtual environments that it created. Uh, it actually creates those inside this little talks directory here. Um, you can poke around there if you want, although I usually consider those kind of read only and like probably not something I should poke around with. Um, I mentioned this pause thing earlier. Uh, let me show you first how you can run a specific test environment, but then we'll run a specific test in that. So if I want to run just the Python 3.8 test environment, I'll use talks-e py38. So that'll skip all the other ones in the env list. In fact, you can run ones that are not in the env list. So if I wanted to, you know, for whatever reason, run talks-e py27, I don't have Python 2.7, uh, or this library doesn't support Python 2.7, so this is going to crash. Um, but it will at least attempt to try and install it. And it'll, it'll get pretty far before saying, like, this is not compatible with 3.6.1. So you can use dash E to select things that are not in this test env list. And if I wanted to, again, take advantage of this pause args here, we can do talks dash E pi three eight, but you'll do a dash dash. This will say, hey talks, don't handle the rest of these arguments. Um, and if I just did tests here, that would handle the same things as before. But let's say I only wanted to test the, you know, F string tests. And so I can do this and it'll only run my F string tests. Apparently there's another F string test in main. So that's kind of the like very basics of like getting started with talks and like some of the stuff you can do with it um, and kind of how like the environment creation stuff works. Um, another cool trick that I added to talks pretty recently, uh, cause you know, it makes virtual ends for you. So you might be like, well, what if I wanted to like interact interactively work faster, but not involve like all of this talk stuff in the middle. Uh, and talks gives you a great way to do that out of the box with talks dash dash dev env. Um, and this will create a development environment, a virtual environment that's outside of the .talks directory, uh, which you can just activate, vm bin activate, and this will install your library automatically in editable mode. If we pip freeze, you'll see that we have dash e, that means it's editable. And so here I can just call pytest test directly, and I don't have to go through the talks overhead to run this. And it's kind of like a, a nice little tool there. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of the basics of talks, at least how I use it. Uh, hopefully you found this useful and hopefully you can uh, help understand why this is helpful to the community, you know, give a standard way to come to a Python project and run some tests. Um, and also check out Knox, which is a related tool, um, but it has a, a little slightly different approach to configuring stuff. Um, it uses a Python file, which I don't know. I think Python files as configuration is problematic, but whatever. It's good. Use it. One of the two. Either of them. I don't care. Just just please. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. And if you guys have additional stuff you want me to explain, you know, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.